a pal of ours, colleague of ours, yes. uh, is being threatened uh, by Canada, America's evil top this hat. Is, this is Jordan, <laughs> Jordan's fault for being Canadian. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I never tri- heard that before. That's the first thing you said I loved. <laughs> Thank you. No, I had and a pun in that video. America's evil top hat. The America's right. evil top hat, and I had some joke about a cookbook that you also... Oh, that was amazing. Thank that was you. So, that was a good joke. All right, I've got right. two. You're right. That was a great joke. I, so in 10 years. <laughs> two, two in a decade. <laughs> Ontario is threatening to take away Jordan's psychology license. The, the, the uh, Superior Court of Justice ordered Jordan to pay 25 grand to the College of Psychologists and upheld the order that he go through a so-called social <laughs> media re-education program. I, I, I pity the re-education program. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine? <laughs> like, yeah. I, I will not tweet what you want me to tweet. <laughs> you know, they've been making this mistake with Jordan from the very beginning. If they had just left him alone, he'd yeah. still be like teaching university classes. Yeah, for, for, <laughs> for, for people who, you know, believe that the left in America does not want to actively shut down speech, they do. I mean, take a look at Canada. I mean, they want to destroy your yep. life. They really, really do. I was explaining this to somebody, again, a friend of mine who's on the left, and I blew his mind when I explained to him that if it comes down to Trump versus Biden, I will vote for Trump, and it won't really take much to, to convince me of that, like, at all. And he asked why, and I said, because of this. Because you want to trans my kids, you want to, or at least you want to make it good and proper for the public schools to work to trans my kids. You will attempt to shut me down if I speak freely, and then they'll be like, no, 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 that's not true at all. Well, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I mean, look what they're doing in Canada. Look what they're doing in the UK. <laughs> the goal here has always been and will always be to make traditional living illegal and make personal sexuality public. That's, that's like the, the only thing that matters to these folks. So in order apparently to be a licensed psychologist, you have to be fully insane yeah. in Canada. You have to actually parrot insanity back to people to be a licensed psychologist in Canada. Honestly, like... It, it, Jordan is going to make their lives so miserable. Yeah, it is. It'll be and fun. It'll to be watch. it'll be quite fun to watch yeah. Jordan. Actually, like I, I, I would love to sit in the room watching <laughs> Jordan take social media reeducation training. <laughs> it will be one of the it would be one of the great experiences of my life. I would pay honest to god money <laughs> to like be available in that room. I, I would appoint. I would go get a Canadian bar license yeah. to go and be in that room while they try to teach Jordan the things he can and cannot say on Twitter. I just would, cannot imagine. This is a man who. As psychology is facing this replication crisis, this, this whole crisis of identity for the entire field, this man has done more good <laughs> from, yes. from the field yes. of psychology than anybody since at least Viktor Frankl and maybe just any psychologist ever. More people are, people come up to me with tears in their eyes. Yep. I'm not exaggerating. Nope. And they will say, Michael, you know Jordan Peterson, the man changed my life. Yep. And, and grown men, like serious men. And, and I think that's the guy that that uh, Castro's well, son that's it. goes well, that's, after. That, that's why. That's why. That's, that's why. Because he's changed their life for the better, and he's made them feel better about being men, and he's made them understand what it means to be a man. And he speaks. You know, it, it, the funny thing about Jordan too is like, you know, because he has a he can have a harsh you know affect on Twitter where he just he gets so <laughs> angry at these people because they pick on people who are smaller than them. He, he hates bullies, but he's the most gracious kindly person that you yep. could possibly meet. Yeah. And, and he genuinely cares about the people who are being stomped on. And that's why they're stomping on him. Why, why wouldn't they? Why yeah. wouldn't they? By the way, you found the conspiracy theory I do believe in. There's no question that Justin Trudeau is Castro's son. <laughs> There's like no question about I, I agree. Yeah, Zero I agree. doubt. I have started to keep an open mind on this because it, by some angles, he's sort of vaguely kind of looks like Pierre or... No, no. Are you, I, I, okay. I'm sorry that you're experiencing astigmatism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Okay, you're right. You're right. He's he's the son of the Cuban dictator. By the way, wait, wait, I, th- I think what you said is really important because to me, that that's the even more dire implication of stories like this. There's the free speech angle, really important, but... The fact that this is what the psychology industry has become yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. is, is people need to understand that. I mean, the psychology, this is why I'm so skeptical and critical of it fundamentally. Totally. And, and I would, before I would advise any loved one to go see a psychologist, I, I would be very, very careful because the entire industry has been totally ideologically captured. I mean, there was a story a few days ago about a child psychologist, prominent one in uh, California somewhere, of course, I think, who was talking about uh, gender, how some children are gender minotaurs. <laughs> uh, or uh, you could be a gender Prius. Well, they, they, um, made it, they made it illegal to practice actual psychology, right? If a kid comes into you yep. and says, I'm sexually right. confused, and then you say, well, maybe you ought to wait on that and see how it develops. It's perfectly normal at the age of 14 to be sexually confused. That's a no-no. That's that conversion. Be, that's conversion. And, but, and, mo- and most psychologists have gone along with that completely. 
uh, with very few exceptions, and the ones that have not gone along with it, like George. Well, th- this is the straight. irony of the so-called conversion therapy. All therapy is, by definition, conversion therapy. Yes, and why? You, <laughs> why should you not be able to go to somebody and say, "I would, I, I'm gay. I'd like to not be gay. Do you have? Can you possibly help me right. and see and explore that?" I don't understand that at all. Right, but in any, if you go to any psychologist, you say, "I have a mental problem. I, I've got some block. Right. Can you convince me to think in a different way and behave in a different way?" That is a conversion. It's every time it's there, a type there of conversion. Is, there is a strain, and it is a strain under fire, no question about it. There's a strain of Christian psychology that I think can be very useful to people. I think it's useful to people to talk to someone. I think talking to someone who cares about you and doesn't have a a stake in your life can be immensely important. But you're absolutely right about this. I think it can be be useful, but it can also cause more more damage than it does well, good. Well, if a person it, is incompetent or, well, yeah, or even, evil. But, even, but, I, but I think, you know, I'm also critical of just the idea of like, well, go to therapy. Everybody just always go to therapy. I think, I think what, what drives people to go to therapy oftentimes is just that they want to just talk about themselves. Right. And, uh, and they, get, they get like, a, they just, they, they have a lot of fun talking about themselves and they want to they kind of wallow in their own misery and they want to tell their own story and, you know, all the, all the, the, the suffering they've gone through. It's just, that's all they yeah, actually that's, want that's to that's do. That's why there's, there's no, as far as I'm aware, no data supporting the idea that simple talk therapy is worthwhile. It has to be combined with cognitive behavioral therapy, right, which is an actual intervention by the psychologist saying your train of thoughts, for example, you're anxious and your anxiety is being caused by this train of thoughts. We need to intervene and say, is this train of thoughts logical? Is this correct? Are you actively well, that's realizing what you're doing? doing? That's CBT, right? So CBT, actually, there's very good data that, but that's an interventionist approach to psychology. This, like, confer- this, I don't know when the confirmatory approach to psychology came about, but even Freud rejected that. I mean, what's, what's amazing is that when, when, when Freud talks about, for example, polymorphous perversity, right? This idea that there's like this human sex drive and that we're driven to, that we're truly driven by the sex drive. He then suggests that that's bad and that the way that you actually end up being a productive human being is you sublimate that yes, in does, favor he of, and that. he does say this. I mean, oh, you sublimate that, correct, in, yeah. in favor of higher purposes. And the, the act of maturing is maturing out of che- treating those desires as primary and sublimating them to higher desires and better things. That's the entire process of growing up. It's only in the 1960s where they say, no, no, no. Real authenticity is where you strip away the sublimation. But, sublimation is a form of anxiety. Yeah. And you have to yeah. deal with that. There, the there is an underlying philosophy to Freud, which he, he didn't intend, but is, is simply built into the system, where the, the true reality of you is your basest desires. Yeah. And everything else is laid on top of that. And that's not always been the case. I mean, if you think of Plato and the chariot analogy, all of the, all of our instincts, including our noble instincts, are included in us and they're part of who we are. And I think that, you know, I have to say on a, on a more shallow level, uh, I, I worked with a lot of suicidal people. I've been on hotlines and things like this. 50% of them call up to tell you why they can't be helped. 50% of them do not want to be helped. 50% of them are looking just for somebody to say, you're not awful. And that's not a bad thing. I don't think yeah. that's a bad yeah. thing. I think that's helpful. But I think one of the, one of the problems with the psychology industry is that uh, the only hope... We, uh, Jordan Peterson is a good psychologist because he's a good philosopher. And, and it's his, psychology is not really... The idea that it's like medicine or science, it's no. not exactly. No. Like, a, a good psychologist is someone that has a good idea of like, what a human being is supposed to be. Absolutely. And that's what you go to a psychologist with that question. What am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to think? Uh, what ways am I supposed to act? And, and those are not medical questions. Those are not scientific questions. Yeah. Those are philosophical questions. The reason why Jordan Peterson is so effective is because he's a, just a good philosopher. He's got, a good, he's got wisdom. He's got a good sense of how a person is supposed to and be. This is, you're right about this because when it comes to medicine, there is an agreed upon standard of what you are trying to, to achieve. Right. right. When it comes to medicine, you come in, your leg hurts. The idea is, how do I make it so my leg doesn't hurt and functions properly? But functions properly is well understood. A leg that functions properly lets you go places, supports your weight, all of these sorts of things. When you come in, you say, I, as a human, am not functioning properly. That requires some explication. What does it mean to function properly as a human? And this is where you get into the philosophy section, right? right. Because we have generate, we have millennia of tradition suggesting what it means to be a properly functioning human being. And really over the course of the last century and a half, we've decided that to be a fully functioning human being means to essentially humor your basest desires. That's what it means to be a fully functional human being. And it's really all of these other impositions by society that have prevented you from engaging in the, in the great you that exists internally. And that's where psychology has gone utterly wrong. That's right. And, if, that, and that is not, not what history, the history of philosophy tells us. The history of philosophy has always said that there is an aspect of the human being that knows right from wrong, that can reason to right from wrong, and that can impose restrictions on its basic so ama- And that's built into the human person. Wait, well, well, the psychology never, like modern psychology never asks, 
in order to accomplish what? So again, yep. when, when they say like heal your leg, it's in order to accomplish walking, in order to yeah. accomplish carrying. When they say I want to be a whole human, in order to accomplish what? Because what you want to accomplish is going to be a large part of which direction yeah. we're actually directing the healing. If you say I, I want to be non-anxious, and so I want to be non-anxious so that I can party all night long and drink without worrying about it, then a psychologist theoretically could do that. They could say, you know what? Don't worry about anything in your life. Get rid of all of your worries. Get rid of all of your cares. Live off of welfare and do all those things and you won't be anxious anymore and your anxiety is healed. But that's not a properly functional human right. being. Right. The other way to, to actually deal with the anxiety is to say, you're anxious about some things that are actually real. Let's figure out solutions that allow you to channel that in the most positive possible direction for your flourishing and the flourishing of your family. Right. What's amazing, there used to be in the olden days before modern people ruined everything, <laughs> there was a simple answer that old Uncle Aristotle gave us, which is this idea of the four causes. Yeah. We have a formal cause, a material cause, an efficient cause, and a final cause. So the formal, for us, for our people, it's the formal cause is the soul. The material is the body, the matter. The efficient is, well, God makes us, you know. And the, uh, and, and the final cause is, you, Aristotle would say, happiness, eudaimonia, human flourishing. We Christians would say, to, to know God and to love him forever and to serve him here on earth. Uh, Modern people say, that's BS, that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo from a pre-scientific age. Forget about the final cause stuff. Forget about the formal cause. You don't have souls, you don't have any of that. Come on, get out of here. Uh, but they don't actually get rid of it. Wh what Aristotle understood is you have to have an answer to that, and the modern people have an answer to that. They, they say now, instead of the formal cause being the soul, they say, well, you know, man, it's just like my identity, man. It's my whatever. And for, yeah. for the final cause, what do they say? What the implicit final cause today for human beings, that they say, is just to feel good, you right, know, just to have pleasure. pleasure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it makes people miserable. And also, they, they have forgotten the fact that to do right, to do right is the path to feeling better about yourself. To, yeah. do, to do, you know, this, this... Well, ironically, as we've gotten rid of death... People speak as if there were no moral standards. Well, but in order to understand that, in, in, because we become such a healthy, physically, mm. general people, and we live so long, ironically, our time horizon has disappeared. And so the idea always with eudaimonia or, yeah, yeah. or simcha in, in Hebrew or any of these words that we're talking about, the idea was over a long period of time, right? The way that you establish whether you are happy is you look back at your life and you look at all the things that you were that you built and the yeah. process of building those. And even the things that you're most miserable about in the moment may be the things that make you happiest. There have been a bunch of studies. Roy, Roy yeah. Baumeister does a lot of really good work on this. And he found that there is a wide differential between what people experience as joy and what people experience as, as meaning. They're not the same thing at all. And that becomes most apparent obviously, when it comes to children. When it comes to children, what you experience is joy and what you experience is meaning are very often incredibly disparate. Yeah. Because raising kids, as, as Matt knows even better than I do because he's got six, but I've got four, that's a lot of kids. And it's not always, you know, roses and butterflies. There are a lot of times when it is rough. It is very difficult. I mean, last night when you're, when you're up in the middle of the night, three to five in the morning because your baby has too much snot and you're really like sucking the snot out of the baby's nose so the baby can breathe. Is that joy? No, but that's meaning. Yeah. And that meaning is what leads to happen. But that requires a time horizon. Because but, in order for way, you, and, and you're, also, you're, you're, you also just corrected something. I misspoke when I said the efficient cause is God. The efficient cause for our creation is our parents, is our family. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing that they totally deny, and they deny the truths that you're just and explaining. there's also a distinction between joy and happiness. I mean, happy, you win the lottery, you're happy for a day or whatever, you know, and then you become miserable because you have money that you didn't yeah. earn. But, but joy is, is something you can experience even in grief, even in crisis. And you're right, it's totally connected to meaning, it's totally connected to fulfilling who you are as a And it's human iterations being. over time. It has to do with iterations and, over and, time. As yes, the time horizon yes. goes away, well, because in the moment you're struggling, but, you're stressed out, and all that stuff. But the joy, know, but the joy can can be there even in those moments because you understand that this is what you're here for. You know, I mean, to, to yeah. suck the snot out of your baby's nose when that's when he, that's why you're here. That is, and and that purpose does. I mean, I can say this because I'm now at the end of life. You do look back and say, like, that was great. You know, I'm so glad that happened. The member exclusive portion of our show continues now at DailyWire.com. If you are not a member, if you're just one of those freeloading hoi polloi watching now <laughs> on one of these despicable social networks, head on over. Click the link in the description. Subscribe right now. We will see you there.